What's up my Jeep peeps? Today's video we're going to show you how to test an ignition coil. Let's get this done. Okay first of all, amongst all this mess, where is the ignition coil? Where is it located? We got your valve cover. Here's your distributor. Follow the wire. Here's your coil. This is your ignition coil. This right here is what creates the spark. It goes into the distributor cap here and gets distributed amongst all your plug wires. So sometimes you get this case to where the uh, Jeep's not going to start, and you test and you test and you figure out, hey, you no, know, we need, do we have fuel? Check your injectors over here. You can hear the ignition. You can hear the pulse, the clicking in. If you, I'll show you how to do that in a later video. But then you got to check see if you got spark, and that's what we're going to find out today. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and pull this coal wire here. I think I am. Damn it. Get up here. Ah, there it goes. I'm going to pull that off and show you how to check for spark. Now, bear in mind something here. I have the Jeep out of gear, as in it is in neutral. It will, if When I turn the motor over, the Jeep's not going to run over my feet. And I have the wheels chopped so that, well, the Jeep don't roll away. So, here we go. I got this out, and here's what we got. Hold on just a second. I, get, I need to grab some. Okay, what I've done here is, here's your ignition coil. It comes around. This is, an, this is a spark plug I pulled out of my other motor. I stuck the spark plug up inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the motor over and you should see a spark jumping off this uh, tip right here. Now I'm going to turn the motor over by taking the screwdriver. If you look way down yonder is the starter. You got this post here and you got this post here. If you take and cross those two posts out, you'll spin the motor over. Watch. Now, like I said, I've got it out of gear and the ignition is turned off right now. See? Pretty simple, huh? But you can buy one of those little button contraptions. You put your little alligator clip here and the alligator clip here. You push a little button, like right here, and spin the motor over. That's one option. So, whenever I spin the motor over, I did not get a spark here because I did not have the ignition on. So, I'm going to go turn the ignition on now. Okay, the ignition's turned on, and I'm going to short the starter out again to spin the motor over. But since we do not have the coal wire hooked to the distributor, the motor will not start. So I'm going to hold this here. And I've got this piece of wire here tied to hold onto the bracket here. Otherwise, you know, if I wasn't holding the camera, I could hold this against a, a metal to ground it out with one hand and trigger the starter with the other hand. But well, since I'm playing with the camera, I'm going to do it. I tied it to that bracket. So let's spin the motor over and see what we get. Touch that pose. Make sure I'm seeing the camera with the to the spark plug. See, we got good spark. One more time, just in case you guys want to see it again. Get that, get that real close. That not touching you up. Pretty cool, huh? All right, get back up here. Okay, so we know the ignition coil is good, which I know it's good because I drive this Jeep every day, just about. But let's just say, for instance, we wouldn't get the spark. We need to find out why. So we're going to test this coil out and see what's up. So to make life simple on ourselves for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take the coil off of its bracket, and that is done by moving this right here out of the way so you guys can see what's up. Get that out of the way. Got two bolts right here. That is a size 10 millimeter. So we got two 10 millimeter bolt, two 10 millimeter bolts right here on the bottom of the coil, and that'll get the coil off. So that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to show you guys how to test it. Okay, multimeter. Mine starts out at 20 volts DC. So that's where you, about where you want it because you want to test. Make sure you got 12 volts coming into your wire there ground, negative side of your battery, or anywhere on the block and you get a good ground. Your red lead goes in here. You got a green wire and white wire. White wire should be a 12 volt constant. 
You see right now we got squat. Then we plug this right here back into the white side of the plug. Then we got 12 volts. So we got voltage coming into the coil. That is a good thing. The other side, which is going to be our signal wire. We'll test that here in a moment. Okay, now we're going to test resistance across the primaries. And primaries are your posts here and here. And since you've got only a single post on your coil here, you're only going to have one trigger. You're going to have a 12 volt wire and a trigger wire. But you want to test your resistance across the two posts here. So, set your multimeter here. Get your ohms down here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Little ohm symbol right there. You want to set this on your lowest setting, which mine shows to be 200. We're going to zoom back. Position you on the camera. Here we go. Take two leads. I touch that post. Dang, skeeters. Go here and go here. You see, I got 1.4. Your range should be between 0.97 and 1.18 ohms. On the high side, you can go up to 1.2, depending on what manufacturer the coil is. So, honestly, low side of a 0.95, high side of 1.2 ohms. So we are at 1.14, 1.4 I mean, so we good. Well, that's actually reading a little bit high, but I know this coal is running good, the thing runs good. So the coal may be actually getting a little bit weak. I mean, it runs great, but shooting at a 1.4, which means you got high resistance across these two right here, which will cut back voltage coming out your post here, which means this coal could be actually on its way out. Hmm, interesting. I'm shooting you guys a video and discovered I may have a coil going bad. That's interesting. Let's test the secondary side of the coil now. Set to 20K. Was on 200, move up to 20. Got one of your leads on that coil. On the post right there where your coil wire goes. You take a touch here. I got 12.4849, 12.49. Touch here, 12.49. So our high, our low side of our range should be 11.3. And we're showing, like I said, 12.49. Low side should be 11.3, high side of a 15.3. So it looks like our uh, secondary resistance is good. Our primary resistance is a little high, which means you know, the coil could be getting weak, but I mean, it runs great, so I'm not going to sweat it at this point. Whenever I get, if you guys uh, really need to subscribe, if you want to know how to build the 4.0, because I've got one on the engine stand right now, coming up soon, I'm going to start breaking her down, getting ready to build another motor. So whenever I build the motor, I might upgrade my coil, since this right here is looking a little bit weird. So anyway, 12.48, 12.49. 12.49. We got a good coil, like I said, a little higher on the primary side, but I think we're good to go. Oh, I told you guys a moment ago that 10 millimeter, there's also a nut on the back side, so watch that, things will escape on you. Okay, now we got to test for signal. I'll move my light around here a little bit. So, don't let it get dark on me out here. Anyway, we're going to test for signal now. I showed you a moment ago on that plug, after I had the coil off, that the white wire has a 12 volt constant coming in. The green wire on the other side is your signal wire. It fires into the coil and says, hey, it's time to throw some spark at those spark plugs, okay? That's what the green wire is for. So what I've done here is, uh, see light, piece of bare wire right here, up inside the back of that plug. It's what you call probing your plugs. What happens when a day when aliens abduct you? You're going to get alien probed. Right up inside there on the green side, and it goes up in there very easily. 
and you feel it contact, it bottoms out and it hits contact to the metal. So now you got metal of the wire and metal contact inside here. Now this is where these little test lights here come in handy. Because if I was to use my digital multimeter, it would drive in nuts showing voltage. The only thing you want to know is it is a getting voltage. So at this point, then you want to take a lay your little electrical probe across this. If I can pull the freaking thing out. Holding the camera with one hand, doing this with the other. Alright. That's probing right there. I think we got contact. So now at this point, I'll move the light a little bit out of the way. Where did my screwdriver go? There it is. So what should happen at this point, I'm going to turn the starter over, and you should see this test light light up. If it's getting signal coming to the coil. So here's what I mean by back probing your plug. Bare metal wire, this is wire I use to tie my parts up when I'm powder coating. Green side, which is your signal wire, white side is 12 volt constant. This is your signal wire that comes from your PCM that tells the coil when to fire. So you take this wire right here, you run it inside there, and push it in until you feel it totally, completely bottom out. Whenever you know you bottomed out inside that plug, you know you've made metal to metal contact. Now, granted, it can be a bit of a pain in the butt to make it stay whenever you go to test it. Sometimes it'll creep out just enough. You're thinking, dang, I ain't getting no fire coming to it. Make sure it's bottomed out in the bottom, in that plug right there whenever you, you know, do your testing for your signal. Trust me, it can crawl out on you in a second. As you guys as you guys seen, it can be a bit of a pain. But anyway, I just want to show you guys that's how that plug goes in. All right, peeps. That wire had wasn't contacting up inside the plug like it should, so I just reseated it. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna do the uh, starter turnover trick, and you'll be able to see the light light up. Now see how it pulses. The pulses is from the cam position sensor and the crank position sensor tell, sending the signal to the uh, PCM. PCM says, okay, the crank position sensor and the cam position sensor is doing its job, so it's time to send voltage to the coil to the voltage from the coil to send some super voltage to all the spark plugs. So, you got a signal coming to that side, the green side wire. Uh, we got 12 volts coming into the wire, which sends voltage to charge the coil up. Then we tested the primary and secondary side voltage of the coil. We seen that the primary side was a little bit on the high side. You see that the primary side was a little bit on the high side, which is okay, not a big deal. Um, yeah, I may change it out later whenever I get ready to drop my new motor in. So, you know, it all tested pretty good. So now you see how to test a ignition coil. So, um, aside from me putting my coil wire back on, I'm ready to fire it back up and go for a ride if I want to. Actually, I'm leaving out in the morning. We're going to go to Chattanooga, get the motorcycles out, and cruise. So... I'm going to go inside, get my stuff ready, then leave out in the morning. So everyone, if you like my video, you know what to do. Give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't, remember to subscribe. I've got some great videos coming up. I've got onboard air that I've got all the parts for. I just got to finish welding up my back bumper. And for, I'm going to make my back bumper as part of my air tank. So i got onboard air coming up. Not a kit, but actually doing it by junkyard parts and going to buy the hardware. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Not just a picture and say, look at me, look what I got. No, I'm showing you guys how to do it. So, you need to subscribe. Uh, got an engine build series coming up. So, subscribe. And if you like the video, thumbs up. So, comment down below. Tell me your techniques if you got something cool that maybe I overlooked. I like to learn from you guys too. And if you guys give me hints, everyone that reads the comments, they learn also. So, everyone, again, thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. Getting dark out here. I'm going to go inside and get cleaned up. So, everyone, thank you for everything you do for my videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Really appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Well, night. Peace out. Later, y'all.